The way that I see it, Christian privilege is an attack on our American values. And in this video, I want to explain why. The term privilege is being used increasingly in the U.S. to describe the situation where a dominant group experiences life um, in a slightly easier way because they are part of a dominant group. This is often applied to male privilege or white privilege. And so by way of example, as a white woman, if I'm driving um, in my car and I see a police car coming in the opposite direction, I'm probably going to check my speedometer to make sure I'm not speeding. But it doesn't really even occur to me that I would be pulled over just because I'm white and I live my whole life never really fearing the cops in that way. So that way of ease in my life is something that I enjoy, and I would like to see that relationship with the police extended to every person, regardless of their ethnicity. And so for me, the concept of privilege is usually about elevating the um, positive experiences and the positive situations of other people to that dominant group. But in this video, I wanna talk about Christian privilege and how I don't think it's useful. In fact, I think it's quite dangerous. I'm making this video because I'm hoping that as secularists and atheists and agnostics, humanists and free thinkers, we can start to use this term Christian privilege to reflect back to the dominant population the not only the benefits they enjoy by being part of the dominant group, but also make them aware of the very negative tinge that is uh, company's Christian privilege. And in this video, I want to explain why I think that Christian privilege as it's being articulated, especially on the religious right, is a direct attack on the Constitution and our American values. I say this because I see Christian privilege as actively seeking to deny non-Christians their humanity, their patriotism, and their civil rights, and again to undermine our constitutional privileges. This Christian privilege is based on the notion that anything which is not Christian is an aberration and needs to be marginalized, including people's civil rights, and that is what makes it a threat to our freedoms. You guys know how I love my definitions, so going to my favorite source, Wikipedia, I'm actually going to paraphrase Wikipedia a bit here and add a bit of my own. Christian privilege is the system of advantages bestowed upon Christians in some societies. It arises out of the presumption that the belief in Christianity is a social norm, and this prejudice results in the exclusion of the non-religious and members of other religions through institutional religious discrimination. Christian privilege can also lead to the neglect of outsiders' cultural heritage and religious practices, I would also add here, and the existence of the non-religious. U.S. Christians might deny that they have any special privileges, but a quick reality check will resolve that question. In this video, I want to focus on the existence of Christian privilege in U.S. politics and its culture wars. For this information, I've gone to a website that has the title Christian Privilege and Religious Privilege. I'll put links in the D-box below. So in particular, uh, in this video, I'm looking at two aspects that the author in this website mentions, which is Christian privilege and culture wars. The culture wars can best be understood if seen, at least in part, as attempts to reinsert and enforce Christian privilege in modern society. Christian privilege and politics are attempts to assert Christian privilege in the political realm. I'm going to pick out one person to exemplify this idea of Christian privilege, and there are so many potential evangelical political candidates that I could use to illustrate this insidious Christian privilege that permeates especially Republican politics. But to keep this video to a reasonable length, I'm going to use just one person to illustrate it, and I'm going to be using Mike Huckabee. I'm using Mike Huckabee because he is a former and sort of regular Fox host, and he's a professional political candidate, and his public existence depends on demonizing others to make Christians feel both morally superior and constantly under attack. I'm going to quote Mike Huckabee here from a Time article on his campaign launch, which he, in which he said, We've lost our way morally. We have witnessed the slaughter of over 55 million babies in the name of choice, and we are threatening the foundations of religious liberty by criminalizing Christianity. He went on to say, Many of our politicians have surrendered to the false god of judicial supremacy, which would allow black-robed and unelected judges the power to make law and enforce it. 
The Supreme Court is not the supreme being, and they cannot overturn the law of nature or of nature's God. What Mike Huckabee refers to as the criminalization of Christianity is, in reality, the pushback against Christians who want to use the power of the state to enforce their particular Christian beliefs on their employees, on their customers, and on their fellow citizens. We see that they deny marriage equality for no secular reason, only biblical ones, and that's promoting theocracy, not democracy. They want to override the religious beliefs of women employees by giving the power to their employers to cite the employer's religious beliefs in denying those women access to contraception through the insurance that the women themselves earn through their labor as part of their benefits package. And most recently, their attempts to force gay customers who want to be treated equally in the public market space to pay for that right by having to sue Christian bigots in court instead of legislators providing them the same protections that other people enjoy based on sex, race, religious beliefs, etc. Mike Huckabee and his fellow believers would make the U.S. into a theocracy, which seems the most anti-American thing anyone could do. Let me remind you of his quote. The Supreme Court is not the supreme being, and they cannot overturn the law of nature or of nature's God. Here, Mike Huckabee is attacking the very constitutional agreements that hold our secular state together. He is arguing that Christians should reject the legitimacy of the highest court in the land and replace it with their biblical notions of what their God wants. Now, as a Democrat, I wasn't happy with the result of Bush v. Gore, but I didn't go around telling people to overturn the, the, the decision and undermine the constitutional validity of the Supreme Court through all of its precedents going back to Mayberry versus Madison. The fact that he can say these things and not be called a traitor, or at least be called as a hater of our American system and our American values, shows the kind of privilege that he enjoys. You replace his God with Allah in, in that statement, people would be going nuts all over the internet. Mike Huckabee routinely preaches dangerously anti-democratic sentiments. Speaking at the 2014 Values Voters Summit, he said, that's how we change America, my friend. Let's make this a nation once again that unapologetically bows its knee before a holy God. Atheists are among the few people in the country who can point out how anti-American and anti-democratic the Bible itself is, and the God of the Bible is also anti-democratic. Mike Huckabee hates that American democracy gives people equal treatment and equal freedoms. As atheists, we have, I think, a duty to point out that his agenda is to take away our secular freedoms and force all Americans, regardless of belief or non-belief, to follow his personal version of Christianity. It is also important to note that he is wrong. The Constitution is not in any way informed by the Christian religion, except for, as Aaron Ra has pointed out, human slavery and the subjugation of women, both principles that we have taken out by way of constitutional amendment. People who are atheists will know this bit well, but I think it's worth stating again. I'm going to quote from the Treaty of Tripoli here, which was ratified by the U.S. Senate and signed by President Adams in 1797. Article 11. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. I just want to get that like plastered across billboards all over America. <laughs> Given how anti-democratic he is, how does he get away with this rhetoric? Well, he gets away with this theocratic propaganda because he's relying on the self-congratulatory view of conservative Christians who think that their Bible is the legal basis of our constitutional rights, including those for carrying guns, freedom of speech, and freedom of religion. These dominant conservative Christian voices in the media also use slander and intimidation against those of us who use our free speech rights to question Christianity or hold something other than their particular view of the Christian religion as being anti-American and unpatriotic. And because his base believed this huckster and other theists are unwilling to challenge him and call him out on this, he gets away with calling for what is basically the destruction of our constitutional structures without censure. So what can we do? I think one thing we can do is name it and shame it. 
Christian privilege is inherently anti-American because it attacks the fundamental principles of our democracy. It seeks to impose a theocracy and replace the secular government that we have. It denies citizens their civil rights in violation of the Constitution. It seeks to create a two-tiered system with Christians occupying a special place and all other views being seen as having lesser or even no value. And it relies on ignorance, propaganda, bigotry, and prejudice, not reason, evidence, or even rational discussion to advance its agenda. We need to fight back against Christian privilege by identifying the undemocratic basis of Christian privilege and explain to others that it is a threat and a direct attack upon the idea of liberty and justice for all. So what do you think? Put your comments in the D-box below. If you like this video, please give it a like or give me some comments that you like it. Uh, more importantly, share it with others. I would really like to try to hit a thousand subscribers by my one year anniversary, which is in September. And sharing my videos and encouraging other people to check out stuff on my channel, word of mouth is the most powerful source of you know um, passing information on. So until next time, I've been Christy, you have been awesome, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.